this is gonna be my uh my like fifth attempt on, of playing Tidal Tuesday. I just so happen to be to be streaming it this time. But yeah, let's see let's see how it goes. Let us do it. <clears throat> So we have Queen's Gambit declined, it seems. Bishop e7. Okay, so now knight f6, I'm gonna play a, a sideline Queen c2. Now c5 is probably the uh, the easiest to equalize, but my opponent does not go for it. That's fine. Yeah, this is also fine. And here the the idea is that yeah, the idea is that I castle long and castle long and try to checkmate as quickly as I can. <clears throat> Oh, this is not three plus two; it's three plus one. Oh my! So the so the the you know it's not yeah the one second increment difference is huge. Actually, it means that you can actually flag easier. And I um, I need to watch. Okay, so b six I believe is a bad move because of this. Mm, I think I just do I take or do I just ignore this? I think I just ignore this. Let's go h four. Do I have uh, auto queen turn, turned on? Let's see. Uh, just just to double check, play, pre moves. Yeah, double, auto queen is on. Okay, good. Very important to have the auto queen on. Um, it can literally save save the game and lose you at the game if if it's off in this time control. Uh, I kind of want to play g five, but I'm not sure if I can. Actually, I think I can. It takes, takes. I'm gonna be, it's gonna cost me a pawn. If I do it now. I, actually, I would do it anyway. Why the heck not? Okay, so my opponent does accept. Take, take. Okay, no, he doesn't take. He could have taken on e4 and taken on g5, but didn't want to do that. I respect it. That's fine. Let's go here. Just to, just, you know, just to make sure the king is, is safe. Better be safe than sorry, as they say. Okay, so I almost want to play d5 here. I mean, maybe I do. Actually, I, I think I do want to play d5. Heck, yeah. And like here. Or maybe even rook h e1. Because what's going to happen is that... <clears throat> I believe I'm just going to have this crushing idea of knight f6. Uh, the queen is, is kind of stuck if it goes back to d8. Uh, then I have I just have a massive attack on the center. So even though I'm down a pawn here, I uh, all my pieces are perfectly positioned. Like I don't have to worry about anything. And now black needs to be worried about the knight of six discovery, right? That's that's the threat. Uh, bishop e six is probably probably one of the ways. Probably if not the only way to to defend against knight of six. But let's see. Uh, thanks for a sage. Hoping to learn a few gambits from you. Ah, uh, that's probably not gonna happen, <laughs> I'm not a I'm not a gambit guy. I I I I play random stuff. So I I you know when I play blitz, I usually just play random openings. But I I do not believe in power in in the power of gambits. I I I play like normal mainstream openings. Um. Without really knowing much about them. <laughs> Wait, what? So bishop e6 wasn't played. So my opponent is gonna play this position down a queen. That's. I mean, I'm. I'm all for it. Like, yeah, I will take the queen. Thank you very much. <laughs> I'm not sure. I mean, bishop e6 might have been. I don't know. It, it. In my mind, it wasn't really that difficult to see. But you know. You know. You never know when you play others. Okay. So I. I see bishop takes g6, and it just looks completely lost for black. Yeah, okay, so now I can take on d7, I can probably even take on f7. I can do whatever I want and I should be able to win regardless. So let's just take here. I just need to be watching out for, for checkmates in the first rank. That's that's it. If yeah, if this happens, I'll I'll take and uh, and I'm I'm a billion percent positive there's gonna be something. So can H8 is happening, right? Yeah. Okay, there is no other move. I can so the first first thing I see is just rook d3. Right, that's probably the simplest I can do. And now for rook f8, I can take. 
and play queen h5, queen f3, and just just have a uh, two connected pass pawns along with the queen. That's uh, that's an expl that's an explosion. The queen and two connected pass pawns. Oh man, that's just that's just over. So let's go for it. Takes. Check. Take. Uh, can do queen e3, can do here. If I do queen c3, then king g6. If I do queen e3, black will play bishop d6 and try to stop me from playing f4, which is not a big deal. I think I'm just going to let it happen. So bishop d6 is happening. Yeah, bishop d6 does happen. Um, let's go here. Now my threat is queen h6 and g6, so bishop f4 is actually a must. Very nice. Now, okay, queen e7, there is rook f7, so I cannot do that. Let's check here, king g8. Right, king g8. I can also do queen g6. Yeah, so I, I, I'm... Wait, what? This doesn't look right. Okay, so what about g6? Check. King e7, king e8, king e7, I just promote, right? Check here, here. That was quick? No, I wouldn't, I wouldn't call this game quick. I mean, quick would be like 20 moves, but yeah, this game was like, eh. I didn't sacrifice. I mean, yeah, I, did, I, I mean, this this is not a really a gambit. I'm pretty sure I could have gotten more. So black is not supposed to play b6 in this position. Black is supposed to, I believe, play c6. And now against h4, they are supposed to play like early g6, bishop g7. So this this maneuver that my opponent performed later later on in the game, it's a key maneuver to stay safe because essentially my idea is to play h4, g4, g5, and and black's black needs to black just needs to hide the bishop over in g7 to to stop that. That's how black equalizes here. Okay, so I guess I was amongst the ones who finished first. So now we can focus on looking at other people's games. Okay, Hikaru already won, Jeffrey won. I believe there is Okay, so let's look at let's look at Christopher's game. So Christopher is playing black here. He is He is down a poem. He's also, he has also no time. So I'm pretty sure that unless his opponent blunders like bad, white should, uh, white should probably win this game. Even though it's, I think, theoretically speaking, this is probably a draw. Well, because we have an opposite color bishop endgame and oh, rook c5, rook c5, the both blunder, rook c5. Rook c6, rook c6, what is going on? Okay, I mean, okay, there's... <laughs> I mean, there is absolutely no excuse for blundering this because white player with white pieces has 20 seconds here. So, you know, you don't have to play fast. What, what white is trying to do here essentially is trying to flag black. But it's not a good, it's not a sound strategy. Like, you don't have to. You can just win by position, right? My attack was faster. Yeah, I yeah, I'm, I would say that my that you know that that's 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 a tricky part about that line. If if black doesn't react to it properly, they just lose. That's why I play it. Especially it's especially good for blitz, but it's not exactly a gambit. Okay, king f three, rook d six. Yeah, so now now it's gonna be even harder for white to win. Yeah, see now now some issues. Appear rook d6. Yeah, black is just gonna keep moving back and forth. And how does white win? Okay, so king is gonna get to e3, I suppose, and then to. Okay, but that's <laughs> that's it. <a> what? <laughs> it's a threefold repetition. Okay, well that's what a roller coaster. I f I forgot how fun how fun blitz uh, blitz tournaments are, because yeah, this stuff is gonna is gonna keep happening like all the time, nonstop. Oh my, King D1? Wow, this this is a very rare... Yeah, wow, Rook C6 is the only move, yep. An extremely rare position where white has four pawns against the, against the rook and the bishop, and, and black black cannot seem to find a way, but I'm not sure if there is a way. Uh, if, if there were no pawns right now, this position would be winning for black. It's winning by force. Uh, king e1, okay. Bishop d4. No, G, no, there's g7. No, g7, b7. I feel like if, if anyone can win here, it's probably white because because of sheer amount of pawns. Okay, bishop d4. Uh, what well, rook e3, rook c3, rook e3, rook c3. Oh my god, this wins. Oh my god, what white flag? Rook e3, just remove a defender from the g7 square. Just rook e3, take on c3 and win. <laughs> uh, can I play with you, uh, Chandan? Sorry, I'm playing in a tournament right now. 
So maybe maybe after. <clears throat> I'm playing a, a woman grandmaster. Let's go for Queen's Gambit accepted here. So play d4, d5, c4 takes. Knight d7 is, is uh, so my idea is to play c5, but um, the reason for why I don't do it immediately is because there is this line where white can take on c5 and, and essentially um, transpose into a um, an endgame without queens. So I, I, I do not want to play the endgame without queens because I feel like in blitz is going to be a pain to, to win that position. So uh, I, I would just much rather avoid it, period. So this is a very non-standard position where I'm not even sure who is better. Uh, I seem to be doing just fine. But once again, I, I can't really say for sure who has an edge right now. I, I, will, I will kind of like my position, right? I have no issues given that I can finish developing and that's, and that's what... So I, may, I may decide decide to throw this in because uh, it, it doesn't let white play bishop b4. So if white ever played bishop b4, then, um, then moving the knight away from c5 would mean the, the bishop trade. But this way, there is no bishop trade anymore. I just need to make sure I don't, I, I don't misposition my pieces from this point on. Let's see, let's go queen b6, I guess. So now I just need to, once again, because white, white already got their rooks out, I, that's, that's, that's my next step. That's what I still need to do. The h3 kind of gives me time to do that. So let's, let's go for it. Rook c8. I might be looking towards playing something like this, right? So that's uh, that's how I'm intending to make progress. Uh, usually pre-moving moves like rook c8 is a good idea because, well, if they, if they happen, great, you can save a second or two. If they don't happen, not a big deal. I don't really have to take, but I will. I mean, um, just you know, there was there were some tricks uh, on on the on the D file, so I'm gonna move away. Yeah, so my opponent seems to be just trying to trade pieces, which I was so desperately trying to avoid. But um, being able to trade doesn't necessarily mean you're gonna survive. <laughs> Clearly, my opponent is trying to not lose this game, and you know when you're playing when you're playing scared, it, it, it sometimes backfires. So let's see what I can do. Uh, let's play. Let's start with g6. So this move is just uh, I'm just making this move so that my king can run away. If if some stuff on the last rank happens, such as queen c8, it, it does, it's not going to happen right now, but in the future it may it may come in handy. Like for example, now this allows me to play an e4, not anymore, obviously. Uh, how about I go knight d7? Maybe maybe uh, flip my net over to one of these squares. Bishop c4 happens. Very interesting. I'm not sure, I'm not entirely sure what what the bishop is doing here. Uh, okay, let's go knight e5. So if bishop goes to b3, that's 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 a sign that I'm, I've I've kind of made progress. Okay, so my opponent doesn't fall for it, but now I can maybe force a move such as b3 or f4 or something. Something is going to weaken white's position somewhat. Okay, this doesn't seem to be doing much, does it? I'm still threatening to take. Um, f4, f4, I can, I can just move back to c6. Yes, it's going to lead to, uh, to, to, to the trade of knights, but um, <laughs> If anything, once again, I'm looking. I'm looking to weaken White's position as much as I possibly can. So you know, as as long as White makes pawn moves, I'm happy. Here, White, you see, the White, yeah, White has to be careful because if White is not careful, I would have probably sacrificed on e three. But now with the knight on c two, look, where is the knight going? Ah, oh, ah, oh, hello, knight. <laughs> I feel like the knight is not going anywhere. Anytime soon. I'm oh I'm okay. I'm, I apologize. A one. Okay, <laughs> that can go to a one. Uh, yeah. Well, a one is not exactly a, a very good square for the knight to be on. <laughs> I'm not. Sure, I'm not sure why I'm laughing so hard. I'm sorry. I apologize. But it's just. It just looks. Look at that beast. <laughs> I'm sorry. <clears throat> oh lord. <laughs> 
Knight a1. Yeah, um, okay, well, <laughs> I shouldn't let my guard down because I st <laughs> I'm pretty sure I'm winning, but I just, I still need to win the game. Uh, let's go here. Trade this way. Because of, because of how how mispositioned the knight and the queen are, right, they'll, they'll never be able to work well with each other. And essentially, if white takes in d3, I'm, I'm, I'm going to trade, right? I'm going to take it back with a bishop, obviously not with a queen, because our, my queen is, is defending the bishop on c5. So I'm going to do that, and then my idea is to play queen e5, and that's why I'm doing all this. So now queen e5 is, is going to be lethal. Yeah, and that's game. Looks like it, right? Queen a5, I take here, and then I take there. And that's game over. How how a position of one single piece can change the outcome, see guys? That's, yeah, that's just, that's just a lesson. Obviously not falling for any, any of the, yeah, any of the queen d4 stuff, right? There's queen d4. Oh, yeah. This was, uh, this so far it's a smooth sailing. Let's see if I, if I can keep keep it up this, the same way. Actually, it's not very surprising because like in most of title two's determines, I always begin like really well. Like I always go like five out of five, six out of six, and then and then as a tournament you know comes to its logical conclusion, I start collapsing. Now I, I I gradually start playing stronger people, and then they beat me, and yeah, I, I kind of I don't know get demotivated or something. Pony was out of the game. Oh yeah, po that pony was oh. <laughs> It was not. It was not on a, on a on a on a square. It would love to be. Definitely, A one is definitely not it. Uh, let's let's follow Jeffrey's game here. He seems to be. Oh, this is very interesting. Let's see. King D four. Who is faster? It's gonna be a. It's gonna be a. A race. Excuse me. I'm not sure. I'm up. I appear to be a little bit sleepy today. King e5, well, black can just take on h5, no? h6, 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 wait, 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 h6, this is, no, wait, h6. This would be interesting, but okay, let's, let's follow the game. Okay, but it still happened, it still happened exactly the same way. Let's see, I'm not sure, I'm not sure what's happening, what's, what is going on? Uh, I mean, black has got to be winning, right? G, g4, yeah, and the two pawns, two pawns together are unstoppable. Just like king f3, king f3, g3, right? Just anywhere in the pawn. Or or this, yeah, this is also fine. And the white flags, even though they could have just resigned. We have uh, Grandmaster Fidel Corrales, who is uh, a good friend of mine and also um, my past teammate, uh, unfortunately, seems like he is losing this game because after king g7, black has queen to g6, which blocks any and all checks. What is my position? Well, it's only been two ga uh, two rounds so far. I won both games. I'm, I probably maintained my original position, which was like fourth seed or fifth seed. So the... Um, you know, the standings begin to matter by around eight or nine, I would say. So, like when when the tournament comes to its well, it starts starts coming to its logical conclusion, that's where that's where your position matters the most because then like every point matters, and you know, it's basically your your results directly influence the outcome. But in the beginning, you know, you can have a hiccup. Okay, for some reason I'm. Oh wait, it's because a whole bunch of never mind. I was not, I was not foreseed because <laughs> a whole bunch of people who were higher rated than, than me joined late, and so I'm like six, I'm like tenth right now or something. How many rounds? Eleven games. There are eleven games, and there should be, if I, as far as I remember, there should be um, there should be a break, at some point. There should be um, a five to ten minute break after one of the games, probably after round six. Uh, okay, let's see. Uh, all the games are over, so we are just waiting 
for the next games to begin. There we go. I am playing International Master from Egypt. Very nice. So let's go. So this time let's go C4. Let's play some English. Okay, so we, it seems like we're going to transpose into some kind of King's Indian setup. Let's do it. Bishop g4 is a move for sure. This is my line. I play this line as black. I'm not even kidding, guys. This is my... What? He takes with a pawn? What the... No, take with a knight. <laughs> Why take with a pawn? No, don't... No, don't play it like this. This is so... Why? Why? Okay, this is this is the this is a scared approach. Like you're supposed to take with a knight. There's a, there's a really fun line there that my opponent probably doesn't know since he didn't play it. I assume he doesn't know it. But yeah, I'm 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 slightly I'm a tiny bit disappointed that my opponent didn't play it because I know the refutation. <laughs> I I knew I know the refutation of that line. That's why I was like so hyped because because the so I have a funny story to share. Basically, I played this line in Kings Indian. I played like very often, and I played in classical games, right? So uh, the line is unsound. The line is is it's just straight up bad for black. But even though I have like dozens of games in this line in 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 the database, so people can see those games, not a single one of them. And and I believe there were at least there were at least uh, three grandmasters that I played that line against. None of them were prepared. <laughs> I'm not sure how that happened or if people just didn't prepare for the games against me, but nobody was ever prepared against that line. And I won like every single game I played in that line. Like I played like 11 games there and all of those 11 games are in the, in the database so people can see them and people can look at the line and prepare against it. And nobody did. Oh, I don't know. Oh, I don't know what happened because every single one of them lost to me in that line. But anyway, uh, let me let me focus uh, focus here on on this game because I I'm not doing as well as I would like to. I need to, whoa, I I need to like what, <laughs> what am I supposed to do even to survive this? Well, there's knight f3. This this looks very very unpleasant. It always happens like this. I always start start talking about something and then and then get myself in trouble in the game. But it's okay. I'm gonna dig myself out of this. I have. I have a 20 second advantage on the clock. Fortunately, knight f3 doesn't win the game immediately because I take and then I get to trade queens and I should be fine. Why did you ca why did I capture with a g pawn? Well, because if I capture with the e pawn, there is this knight d4. Uh, well, it still happened, right? It's just it's, it's happened eventually. It just didn't happen right away. So I, I would say that I still kind of failed to stop it. So this looks extremely suspicious. Yeah, like, <laughs> like <laughs> this looks like I'm just lost. Um, I I hope that I can survive here somehow. I'm obviously I'm looking to play Bishop B two because that's the kind of de development move I want to make, right? Because my bishop is clearly not doing anything on C one right now. Twenty nine hundred. Hello, Felix. Good to see you. Um, takes. Uh, wait, do I not just win a pawn here? It looks like I'm just winning a pawn right now, no? I mean, I can also... Oh, does he, oh, does he want to play queen c6 here? Oh, I think that's what he wants. And then I would... Do... Oh my god, wait, I, I lost. No, no, wait, never mind. Shoo, shoo. No, wait, I am lost. Did I not lose just now? No, I didn't. I did not lose. Oh my god, wait. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I... Yeah, there's... Oh, Pog Champ, Pog Champ got him. <laughs> I got him. <laughs> I got him, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> this is gonna be the tilter for my opponent. Oh no. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, it, it it be like that sometimes. What can you do? <laughs> it is it is so funny. I, I got so lucky. I got so lucky that this works. I mean, this is not well played at all. So let me explain what happened. 
Okay, so what I blundered here is that if I take on f3, this is actually very cool. If I take on f3, there is this move, queen c6. It pins my queen, right? My queen is a defender of the rook. So there isn't much I can do other than just go for a trade. And instead of taking the queen back, black can make this cheeky intermediate move, rook takes d1, which basically wins them the rook. So this is what I blundered. And then I was like, oh, I'm done for. But then I, I was thinking to myself, oh, well, what, what? So I don't have to take on f3, right? Because queen, g, queen g2 is threatening, so I can go rook g1, right? So just, just defend against queen g2. And then I was like, oh, 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 wait, but then there is rook d1. And that's exactly what happened. So my opponent just plays this. And if, you know, under nor normal circumstances, imagine his, my opponent's king is on the h8 right now. If that's the case, I'm lost because I have to take the rook and then I get checkmated. But just, but only because the king is on g8, I have this amazing just double ch double attack and, and I win the rook. And instead of losing, <laughs> yeah, instead of losing, I win. Okay, well, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's blitz, right? <laughs> it's it's going to keep happening. I'm, I'm, honestly, I'm very happy that I did not lose this game. It's, it's, yeah. It's, <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I hope I didn't, I didn't use my one time, you know, win in a losing position. I will need I will need this to happen at least two or three more times <laughs> during this tournament. Let's see. Let's follow Hikaru's game. His games are always fun to watch. Oh, though this game, okay, but he's like he's 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 a massive time favorite. And now c6 and b7 looks like it just does it, right? C6 and b7, c6 and b7. Hikaru, there you go. There you go, rook d5. Rook d5, Hikaru, come on, do it. Rook takes d5. Boom. Bishop g3. Haha. Uh -huh. Rook. Oh, wait, he's going for rook d7? Yep, 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 yep. Just like I thought, now c7, rook d8. And yeah, rook d8, c7. <laughs> what is rook g7? <laughs> what is that? Yeah, and black cannot stop the promotion. So c7, c8 is coming. All right, Hikaru is uh, as clean as ever. Let's see. Oh, Jeffrey. Jeffrey is... Oh, my God. Jeffrey has yet another endgame. Well, okay, but this one is nearly impossible to win, I suppose. If anyone can win, it's probably black because, well, black is going gonna, is gonna to get the h5 pawn. Yeah, we, we might have, we might have like, a, a very, very uh, long game here. And I, you know, let's see if Jeffrey survives. Because it's not it's not a guarantee, obviously. Rook d4, king e5, king d2. Yeah, I mean, once again, practically speaking, this is an easy draw. But in blitz, you know, when I'm actually surprised to see that that the title Tuesday is is now is now being played with excuse me with three plus one control instead of three plus two, because three plus one just makes it a bit more chaotic. Oh, what? Okay, so, yeah. So, okay, so there's just not... Uh, fi uh, funny fact, uh, white, white can even give up the bishop. In this, this this position, white can play king a3, give up the bishop, play king b2, king a1, and it's still going to be a draw, because that's that's a theoretical draw, where white cannot win. Uh, the promotion square is is is, is, a, is a, of a wrong color. It's supposed to be... I mean, black has a wrong bishop. The bishop is supposed to be of the same color as a promotion square. In this case, it's not, so it's a draw. Uh, let's see who else is playing. Uh, actually, a lot of a lot of good people are playing. Let's look at mm, Vladimir Onishuk's game here. He is what EF? But why? Why not GF? Okay, you see, this is this is what I'm talking about. Blitz, it's blitz for you. Although black is still not out of the woods. Now E3 is coming. Oh wait, okay, takes. Wait, but okay, that's a first draw. Why would you play a five? Okay, yeah, that's. Just a force draw now, <clears throat> but I mean, I, I probably shouldn't be should I shouldn't be the one. Okay, well, okay, this is just not not gonna happen. Like there is an increment. I understand if there was no increment, so white could have flagged, but yeah, this is just not happening. <laughs> it's just not gonna happen. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Like if white is trying to flag, they should just not go into pawn end game. To make the defense more difficult. Okay, we have a draw here. Not bad, not bad. Now we have two more games left. This one.
Who is playing for the win? I assume black is trying to play for the win because, well, I mean, oh, actually, no, probably white. But I mean, okay. 50 move roll. Okay, these guys are, these guys are thirsty. Making 50, 50, 50 move, 50 move rule draws at this point. Nice. Okay, so I have three out of three. This, I'm playing. Wait, who that? Oh, that's Atene Bakro. Wow, I've played him in classical game and during uh, French league in 2010 or 2011. Not sure which one. That's crazy. So this is the first time I play him in like 12 years. Let's go. Exciting. Let's play some Slav. Oh, he takes immediately. That's interesting. I've actually never seen people take right away. That's, I would say that's unusual for this kind of position. I, oh, I see, I see the point. So I guess the point is that now he plays rook, rook c1, right? The queen c is also not very, not very usual, honestly. Let's see, e4. Oh, it actually makes, makes a lot of sense what he's doing. But it also makes a lot of sense what I'm doing. <laughs> so let's see who makes more more sense. I'm gonna play e5, and then if if he takes, I'm gonna go knight d7 and take control with the two key squares. Okay, he goes d5, but but then the problems persist, right? The c5 square is still there. He lo goes for long castle. Very interesting. Okay, so knight c5, queen c2, a5, bishop g5. I suppose is gonna happen. Actually, no, bishop g5. I have knight takes d5, so he cannot do that. Very nice to know. Okay, wait, what about, what What if I just take here? Isn't this kind of working? Oh, if he takes back with e-pawn, I guess he can do this. Yeah, okay, so that's what he does, yeah. Um, what can I do, what can I do? I kind of want to play like knight d7 f5. But at the same time, I don't. I also do not really want a castle. So I, however funny it may seem, I'm actually going to play king f8, king g8 now. Because I want to keep my rook on h8, as it's already kind of well placed. So if this happens, I go with knight e8, and I'm trying to occupy the d6 square. I feel like I'm I'm in a little bit of trouble here because once again my 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 uh, my peace energy is not the best here. I think my opponent's just looking for some some way to win at this point. I'm not sure if there is one, but let's see. Yeah, if rook f1, I go king f8. So I just need to make sure my king is my king is hidden on g8. Bishop d6. Yes, yeah, so I would like to I would like to reserve the d6 square for my knight because the knight is um, one of the best blocking pieces when it comes to blocking the you know pass pawns. Goes king b1. I go king I go king g8. Uh, that's fine by me. Here I've I probably I'm gonna play some sort of b6 now so that. Um, this move is so that I can play knight d6 later on and, and take on c5, retake on c5 back with a pawn. Aha, uh -huh. interesting. So he does this. I mean, I see what he's trying to do, but does it work? Okay, I take. I don't know. Um, I mean, this this game is crazy. I need. I probably need to be a bit more focused at this point. My opponent is really strong, and I, I am up a pawn, but this is not the kind of pawn I would like to be up. <laughs> as, um, yeah, as I have a whole bunch of issues here for this extra pawn that I've gotten. Let's see what to do, what to do, what to do. What to do, what to do. Hmm. I apologize. Um, yeah, this is a crazy position. I need to be in, uh, in a full focus mode to just not blunder something. Like, white can even take on a five, and I have no clue what's going on. 
Interesting, but okay. I'm hanging in there. Now the question is, is there anything besides? Yeah, so okay, now, now. Very important where I put my king. Should it be h8 or should it be? I think it should be h8. I'm not sure, it's just a, just a feeling that I have. So knight e7 is the only thing I see what can do. Now I have this. Knight g6, I have king h7. H7. Isn't this just over? Queen e6, rook g6, I'm up a piece. And forcing a whole bunch of trades. It should be over. Queen a7, uh, this is the move I did not see. What about rook b7 now? Rook h8 is out of the game. I wouldn't say that. No, I see rook h8 rook h8 was actually the MVP of the game. See, it was it was in the right place in the right time. Without the move rook h6, the thing I'm 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 a toast. So I, I I would I would disagree with your statements there, Chandan. Okay, well, I'm pretty sure I got a little bit lucky there as well. But you know, the result is what matters, and I'm actually. Ooh, very interesting. We have Hikaru versus Al Alexander Bortnik match. And oh my god, what is going on? Look at this. Queen h2, what is this, what is this madness? Rook takes e3, king g6, king e7. Yeah, that's, that shouldn't be right. King e7, king g4, king g Odo. Yeah, queen g, yeah, this is over. Or is it g3? Ah, yeah, this is even easier. Nice. Yeah, nice. All right, so Hikaru is crushing it. As usual, I think this might be this might be my time to play him. <laughs> Honestly. Well, for some reason he's I mean, it's probably because my tie break is higher. For, for some reason my tie break is the highest among all the four four point four pointers. So there's 14 people with four out of four right now. Let's look at Menelaus game here. He won. Good timing. He wins as I open up his game. Uh, who else is there? I know that Sergei Galko is pretty strong. So let's look at him real quick. Oh. Oh, it's over. Oh, it's so over. Yeah. B1. <clears throat> he wins as well. Nice. How, how about Anton Demchenko? Oh, we have two knights. Wow, that's that's impressive. Well, actually, okay, but he took. So actually, if if black didn't have a knight there, like if black does not have a knight here, I'm pretty sure it's winning. Like here, if if white just has two knights and black has a, has a pawn on a5, given that white does not take the pawn on a5, I'm pretty I'm I'm sh I'm pretty sure they win. I'm not I'm not hundred percent on it, but I, I think there is a, a very very difficult way to win this position with two knights because essentially, two knights alone cannot checkmate a king. So if you have a king and two knights versus a king, it's a theoretical draw. But if you have a king and two knights versus king and a pawn, um, depending on where the pawn is, it can be winning. Anybody from India playing this tournament? I'm pretty sure a lot of Indian players playing uh, are playing right now. <clears throat> okay, so there is there is this gentleman right here. Uh, Narayanan. 
and then maybe a bunch more. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure the, there is a lot of Indian players in this tournament right now. Okay, so there is one more game. Okay, this king or king versus king. Okay, nice. Yeah, executing the tonight and game in Blitz would it would indeed be insane. So I I think there's a good chance that the game was to end end in a draw, <laughs> even if if that did happen. I mean, even if that kind of end game was was reached. But yeah, it's really hard to win. We have a next game in a moment. We have 21 people with four out of four, and only only the best. Not I wouldn't say only the best of the best are, are remaining in this pool, but definitely a very very tough competition from now on. Oh. There is a six. There is a planned six-minute break after wait after round four. Oh, so we are on a break. Oh, never mind then. Wait. Oh, to, okay. So they, okay. So I see. They have. So they moved. So now they have two breaks instead of one. Because I believe that. Oh, okay. Maybe I. I. I think I. I understand. So, when Tadot used, they still used to have ten rounds instead of eleven. Is they would have a break after round five, I believe. Technically number one, yeah. Let's cancel the tournament, yeah, cancel. <laughs> okay, yeah, go, everyone go home. <laughs> tournament over. <laughs> because of tie breaks, yeah, I mean, okay, this, this doesn't mean anything. I just, I just happen to play, um, yeah, I just happen to play people who are now doing better, right? That's how tie breaks are calculated. You just, you know, you just take your opponent's performance, your opponent's points, and you add to your tie break, and that's, that's why. My opponents just, just my previous opponents just happened to to be doing well after they lost to me. But yeah, um, we actually have we actually have a small break. Uh yeah, actually yeah, let me tell you guys a little story. So you know like in, in, in Ukraine and Russia there are dedicated schools for chess. And I was very lucky to to be accepted into one of them. And it was actually free of charge. You didn't have to pay anything to go and um, I know that uh, situation in, in here in America is different. So um, you know, while um, your you know, if, if any of you would like to contribute um, to by donating or subscribing to this channel, uh, I just wanted to remind you that you know, 100% of the Twitch subs, bits, and uh, all the ad revenue generated by by Saint Louis Chess Club Twitch channel uh, will uh, go to support scholastic initiatives in the Saint Louis area. And your guys' support directly helps children receive formal chess instruction in their school. To make a direct donation, you can use the command uh, explanation mark donate. And donations of $75 or more will pay for an entire semester of chess programming for one child. And we thank you very much for your generous support. Yeah, and you know, I, I, I do know that it's, it's tough. Uh, you know, not 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 everybody can afford uh, chess education in, in the United States, and uh, it's it's really nice uh, of St. Louis Chess Club to to be contributing uh, towards towards uh, um, this cause because um, I believe that chess education should be available to everyone. And yeah, break duration. I believe the break is about to end, actually very soon. Let me see. It's 12 places, so probably another two to three minutes, I would say. The, the breaks are six minutes long. So this one has been going on for some time, and then there's going to be one more after round eight. So let's hope that I can, I can, uh, I can stay strong until round eight. Once again, uh, early on, if, if, if you so yeah so out of eleven I would say that probably nine and a half would be clear first nine would be would have a good shot of of getting into into some prizes so yeah uh, a single loss is not gonna like be critical but but if you lose two games then then it's basically uh, I wouldn't say it's over uh, uh, in terms of uh, trying to go for for prizes but it's definitely gonna be very difficult because there will no longer be a mar any margin for error. So yeah, let's see. Let's see how I do. 
Uh, yeah, <laughs> my my fourth game was against a very very strong opponent, and yeah, I've I've done pretty well. So let's let's hope I can keep up at it. I do want to play Hikaru. <laughs> this is gonna be my personal goal. My personal goal is okay. So we have like about a minute. Did I prepare for Hikaru? I did not prepare for anybody. Uh, this is this is this is me just just waking up today and deciding to play Title Tuesday, even though I haven't played in one for like half a year at least. What's Hikaru's weakness? I don't think he has weaknesses. I think he is a perfect human being. He is, maybe his weakness, his current weakness is that he is not at 100% in terms of health because he was very unfortunate to get COVID during his, uh, during his trip to, um, to Poland while he was playing in World Rapid and Blitz. He unfortunately got COVID and I'm not, I'm not sure if he, is, if he is out of it now or if he's still kind of struggling, but I wish him all the best and I hope that he, he can he can he can fight this this disease off. I believe Hikaru is also streaming right now, right? Yeah, he is. Um, I I I I do have to commend him for for like just staying strong and even even while he he wasn't feeling his best, he just kept the streams going and, um, yeah. So he has a very strong personality. Okay, so I'm playing yet another Grandmaster from Cuba this time. Let's see how this goes. <clears throat> um, let's play. <laughs> kind of want to play the same line because while well, it's been working, kind of. Uh, I'm gonna play e3 now. This is a tricky line that not many people know how to deal with. So let's let me try it. A uh, four five is a good is a good reaction. Yeah. Hikaru streams. Yeah, Hikaru. Yeah, Hikaru streams very often. Now Knight of Fate, I believe, is a move, and now um, I have h3. h3 is ju just meant to, okay, h6. Um, I mean, <laughs> I should do the same, good sir. So h6 is against bishop g5, h3 is against bishop g4. So, oh, knight b8, very interesting maneuver. So the knight is coming to c6, and then to b4, I assume. Okay. Uh, I understand. Half of, the, half of the job is to understand your opponent's plan. So usually the bishop would go to a3, if not allowed to go to f4 or g5. But this time I'm gonna actually switch switch it up a little bit and and, and do this this you know this little battery. Okay, so my opponent is is playing quite well. Let me let me see what I can do. Let's go rook e2, double on the e file. So e file is is gonna be um, the place of mo where most of the action is gonna be happening. So that's what I'm gonna be doing. I'm gonna be preparing preparing stuff on that file. And before, okay, so now if rook e1, I have to be um, very careful about the bishop f5. And that's probably what my opponent is trying to tell me, that, oh, well, there is bishop f5. What in the world are you doing? <laughs> I'm not going to say that's a nonsense. I'm going to just politely agree and maybe play something like this. Actually, this would, this would lead to me sacrificing an exchange. I... I'm not sure if I'm ready to sacrifice an exchange, to be honest. Uh, let's just go here. This looks a bit crazy because it weakens my uh, my king's position uh, a little bit, but it stops bishop f5. So that's all I need to do. Just stop bishop f5, play, play rook e1, and follow up with some bishop f4. I want to get control, control with the e file. Let's see. Looks weird, but if it works, it works, you know? <clears throat> my opponent is struggling because, however, it, it, my opponent's position may seem okay, but but uh, they they do miss some space. Yeah, so I have a space advantage space advantage right now. Actually, g5 was also an interesting possibility, and I should be watching out for some g5 ideas. Even here, like g5, doesn't seem to be doing much at all, huh? Okay, how about knight b, no, knight b5, mm. no, knight b5 is not great, I believe. How about I do this? Actually, I don't know, bishop of 5 is any, yeah, the bishop of 5 was a threat because it would come to d3, that's why, that's why I felt, uh, felt the urge to stop it. Uh, also, g5 here actually would win me a pawn, actually, let's, let's do it. So this wins me a pawn because I take on b7 and go back. Uh, yeah, it does compromise my king's position quite quite a bit. 
but that's that's the kind of risk I'm willing to take for for the extra material. Let's go back now. I'm I'm just I'm just at this point, right? I'm up material. I, at this point, all I need to do is just trade, 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 trade. Just remove any and all threats. Okay, knight h5 is a is a nice move, stopping me from playing bishop f4 because bishop f4 is like my main idea. That's that's a, a way for me to, to trade as many pieces as I possibly can. Uh, how about I do this? Yeah, let's do it. Uh, I am blundering at a four, which is a a very big deal. You're watching Hikaru also. Wish him wish him good luck for me. <laughs> Here. There, there. Uh, mm, that just kind of, kind of bad. Uh, that's kind of bad. I'm not gonna lie. How about? Yuck. Ah. All right. Let me see. Gotta, gotta focus. At this point, I have to focus because if I don't, I lose. Let's do this. Uh, let's do this. I also need to start removing because I'm down like 10 seconds on the clock. My opponent is taking a lot of time, which is great news. I, I have, I need all the time I can get. What? This works? This is madness if it works. It does, what the heck? What is this? So stupid. This is so stupid. Like, how did I not win this game? <laughs> this is so dumb. <laughs> like, this, this, this is just so winning, man. It's, it's, I'm so pissed. I'm gonna try to win. This is obviously a forced draw. Like no, no, no questions asked about it. Okay, let's not let's not waste any time. Yeah, this is. 
This is horrible. Like the fact that I did not win this position is absolutely horrendous. Um, I'm pretty sure there's a lot of ways to win. Once again, it's blitz and anything can happen, but I think the simplest is probably to just, you know, at, at some point, yeah, this happened. And like, I, I thought I can just keep pushing, but but essentially what happened was the, the white pieces got in the perfect sync with each other. So I have to play king e6 now. This was probably the moment where I just I just threw the game away because here I cannot play rook d8. I thought I can play rook d8, but I can't because of bishop g5 and I'm losing the rook and I actually lose the game. So my only, I think this is still winning if I play king e6. All I have to do is just keep pushing the pawns, right? So I just need to make sure. I have. I also had a lot of time, but I made the same mistake as some people do. I was trying to flag my opponent because my opponent was playing in increments with like no time on the clock at all. So I thought I can just win by either winning or just flagging them. I should have just slowed down and and thought about this because this position clearly has become a little bit tricky, and I I had to like here like. This looks like I may even lose. Like if my opponent just keeps pushing the spawn, I feel like I might even be lost at this point. It's just that they, they went for, for an easy way out, which is a draw. But definitely, you know, their, their white pieces are working perfect with each other and they're just holding everything so that now black can focus on promoting their own pawn. It's probably still a draw, but I'm probably the one making it at this point. Okay. All right. So uh, nothing, nothing happens. Nothing critical happened here. Black is gonna, or white is gonna win. Just gotta make sure white doesn't stalemate somehow. F7, king h7. Yeah, this game is over. What about the other game? Oh, the other game, black also won. Rook f7, a very unfortunate. I mean, white's position was lost anyway. Oh! Playing one of the Indian players. So let's go. Who also has four and a half. Now let's play d6. Let's play something something funny. I don't know what I'm doing, but this looks interesting. <laughs> what is this? Like my pawn is supposed to be on e5 at this point. My pawn is probably like, what the heck? What the what the what the heck in the world is happening? <laughs> like this is so bad, but it's okay. I like playing bad positions from time to time. Uh, let's do this. Take. Yeah, and now it's just d6 is gonna happen, right? At some point, maybe not immediately, but eventually. Yeah. All right, let's do this and then play c5, very next move. Okay. Okay, this is not as bad, actually. This might not be, it might not even be as bad as I thought it's going to be. Now if d takes c6, I go knight c6 and I get my knight over to d4. It's, yeah, it's, it's a game. Obviously, let's not going to talk, so let's not talk about how I, how I got to this position, but it's, it could have been much worse. Let's put it this way. Okay, so what is that that I need to do here? Okay, I don't know. I, I don't really have any experience playing positions like this. I'm gonna lie. So let's play a6 for now. I kind of just take control with the b5 square. It may be a weakness. Might be creating some weaknesses for myself, but that's okay. If bishop c4, finally enough, I'm just gonna play rook f8 back and just just make sure the pawn is safe and sound. Okay, so now b4 is, is kind of annoying. Uh, maybe that's why I need to play like something like queen c8 here. All right, let's try it. <laughs> this, is, this, is, this, is so, this is so stupid. <laughs> this is, yeah, this is like very dumb. Oh, b4, okay, c4, he has d6, right? That's very, 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 very unfortunate. Or is it very unfortunate? How unfortunate is it? On a scale from one to ten, how do you how how do you, how unfortunate do you guys think this is? I wouldn't say it's that bad. D six, I lose a pawn. Right, bishop c four. It happens, but I have knight d four, and then in the end, I have queen b eight, and then and then the pawn on d six just falls, and maybe I can survive there. Like who knows? Let's see. 
but what I do know for sure is that if my opponent doesn't win this game, they're going to be tilted. <laughs> tilted, crazily tilted. Okay, d6 happens, I go, I go, I go. Yeah, I saw this. But I thought it's going to be okay because I have this move. And now b5, I'm just going to let it happen. So it takes, right, b5 here, and then I have b5. Ah, he does this. Interesting. Okay, that's that's fair. I did not see this. I, I would say I didn't see this at all. But this is probably even better than taking on b5. Let's see. Queen d8. Yeah, the rook is annoying. The, the rook is definitely a problem right now. All right, so let's, let's do this, right? Yeah. And then bishop e6, is that what I'm gonna do? I guess right here, rook c1, bishop, uh, bishop e6. Yeah, bishop e6 now or, or later, I think now. Yeah, let's do it now. Because if he takes, yeah, I can take with this one. He can go f3, but then I have some f5, and the game becomes crazy. And that's exactly what I need, actually. I need the game to become as crazy as possible so I can have a, ch a winning chance. <clears throat> I don't mind this. This, will, this is looking interesting, to say the least. Uh, what? Uh, am I blundering something? Um, did I blunder? I mean, I had. To, uh, there's no way, right? I had to blunder. What? What did I blunder? Takes. What am I blundering? What am I blundering? Check. I don't see. I don't understand. Let's see. <clears throat> Maybe he just wants to play rook d7 and. Do I need the bishop? Yeah, I do need the bishop. What, what am I even asking? <laughs> of course I need the bishop. Who doesn't need the bishop? But yeah, oh, I see. He has rook d7. That's that's probably what what's what's up. Okay. So let's yeah, let's let's go for it. I see I see what's what my opponent. Okay, no. He's just taking. Interesting. Okay. So I take Oh, wait, I can't take. What am I doing? I can take here. Yeah, let's take here. Rook d7 probably has to be played, I think. Yeah, rook d7 was indeed played. Oh no, my time. Oh shoot.
I was probably winning. I was, I, I guarantee you I was winning when I was up at peace. <laughs> but this is just, this is just a ridiculous way of, of ending the game. Look at this draw. I mean, my games are ridiculous in this tournament. All right. Uh, I mean, there's got to be, like... Okay, the reason for why I was so confused is because now queen f7, rook g8, and this is a very tricky position, yeah, because I can't move any of my pieces. But I think, I think, yeah, so instead of this, my opponent played h4 here, and I was I was just kind of not sure what to do. And also, I was running out of time. I'm pretty sure I just kind of confused myself a little bit. So I think I played some sort of d3, and yeah. There is compensation for white because white does have two pawns for the for the bishop and also they have this this these annoying like ideas that are there all the time. So never mind. I mean, it, it's it's a good result. Uh, we had a like, very exciting game, you know, and I you know <laughs> I that's what I wanted. Unfortunately for for me, I I was a bit too slow. Here you see, I spent forty six seconds just to take the bishop. Obviously, I wasn't expecting the I wasn't expecting my opponent to take. I was expecting this to happen, or or just like rook d7, and then something like this, um, which would be really bad. But I I remember I, I yeah. So okay, never mind. Done, <laughs> done. We gotta focus on the next game. We have two more games until you had no zero zero one seconds left. Tense draw. Yeah, yeah. Well. That's that's how it's gonna be from now on because I'm playing a grandmaster every game. Like grandmaster every game, it's it's really tough, especially because uh, a lot of these people they have like way more experience playing blitz than myself. Like I've only recently came back to to playing blitz online, and uh, yeah, I'm I'm still rust. I mean, like okay, like <laughs> I've been saying this like so so much that I'm rusty and stuff, but you know that's just the truth. Um, a6, yeah, okay, let's go a3, there's gonna be e5, yeah, takes, 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 castles, right, uh, let's just play this on, like, I know this position is probably not great for white, but why not, yeah, Let's take, play g4 now. <clears throat> oh shoot, that's, yeah, that's, that came really quickly and I just didn't realize that I cannot take because of bishop b2. That's, yeah, that's, uh, that is a problem. That is the problem indeed. Let's go here. Yeah, my position is pretty bad at this point. Like I've I've given up the initiative. It pains me to say it, but I may have to look for ways to survive because there's some I'm pretty sure my, my opponent is looking for some tactics at this point. There's also Queen A2. That doesn't seem to be doing much because I always have bishop c3. Yeah. Yeah, so he just goes rook d6. What if I go here? My opponent is spending some time, but the uh, same can be said about me. I've spent some time and yeah, now we're even. My position is not great, but maybe, just maybe, I can survive this. Let's see. Oh heck, why do I why am I saying it as if I cannot win? Maybe I can survive and win at the same time. Play you more we always draw. I promise I'll break the curse of us always drawing. Felix. I'll be the one to break the curse. I'll be the one to beat you. What is this F5? I'm honestly Honestly, quite surprised about this move. Let's go, let's take, let's play bishop c1. Just does that. Okay. Um, I cannot take because then... No, I can. What do you mean I cannot take? I can take and play here, no? Isn't this just... 
really good. There is 9g3, I guess. It's going to trade a whole bunch, but I have I have an end game where I have a whole bunch of central pawns. I I prefer my position to my opponents there like any time of the day. And I'm pretty sure yeah that's the, that's the only thing my opponent can do actually. Do I want to take on g3 or do I want to take on f5 first? That's a question. I think I just want to Do I want to take it all? Man, I I I'm I'm starting to double double uh, double guess myself. I shouldn't be doing that in bullets like yeah, like, this is like so much time spent at this point. Actually, why? But I'm definitely I'm the one who's trying to win, or so I think. Yeah, there's rook h6, but I have like rook f3. Actually, oh wait, no. What am I saying? I don't have rook f3. I'm stupid. I am stupid. I'm stupid though. Help. Help. I need somebody's help. Not just anybody's help. You know, I need someone's help. I'm playing down the pawn. Yep. Down the pawn. But. But we make it exciting. We make it down the pawn, but exciting down the pawn. Because bishop e5. Go bishop e5. I dare you. Do it. Do it. Come on. Come on, do it. You won't. <laughs> How to bait your opponent into blundering. Do it. You won't. <laughs> My opponent realizes something is seriously wrong here. Yeah, it's not gonna be simple, huh? You're not gonna get a piece of Ilya so easily. Um, yeah, sure, bishop c3. What now? What now? Look at this. Look at this pawn. It's just it, the pawn be running. The pawn be running as crazy. Okay, that's fair. So let's let's do it, I suppose. Although there is this, this. Aha, uh -huh. aha. Uh -huh, I see. I see what my opponent is trying to do here. They're trying to be very tricky, and that's fair because that's the only way they're gonna. Accept a draw? Are you crazy? No! What do you mean accept a draw? Hell no. You're playing this on. This is exciting. Why draw? Let's go here. Don't look for easy ways out. It's just not gonna happen. I'm pretty sure I'm lost here. Or am I? I mean, I, I get to... Do I get to queen with a check? I get to queen with a check. But that's... I'm not sure if that's help. That's gonna help me. <laughs> I mean, I queen with a check, right? Yeah. I mean, this is crazy. Like, we have... We literally have... We literally have a position where my king is in d3 and my opponent's king is god knows where as well. I just, I just want to play King C4. <laughs> oh God, save me! <laughs> I just wanna. I mean, I just can't help it. I just, I'm just gonna do it, King C4. And here, I'm just gonna do like this. Yeah. This is what the heck is going on? The rook is hanging. Okay. Uh, E7. Wait, I can't wait. What? I can't. Can I? Let's go here. <laughs> like, I don't care who wins. At this point, I just don't care. Okay, takes. Here. Hello. Hello, darkness, your old friend. You've come to talk to you again. <laughs> Ship it to Papa. Let's go. <laughs> what in the world has happened? What? is this what is this look at that what's this what is this what what is the position of the knc4 oh my god i mean i'm kind of proud of myself i'm i'm really enjoying myself and and my way of playing this term and i'm gonna lie so we're gonna have a break after the next game let's hope i can i can 
finish the next game strong. Honestly, the reason for why I always do so well in the beginning and then like kind of fall behind by the end is because I get extremely tired. And that's actually, I f I'm feeling it. You know, I, f I feel it happen. My, uh, my stamina is below the lowest point imaginable. Like I, I'm a very, I'm a very weak person physically. Oh, hello, hello Danish. Why not bishop d4 check? Well, bishop d4 check where? Yeah, I, I was I was calculating it. So here, for example, bishop d4 just c5. I didn't know what to do after c5. I didn't want to take on c5 because the, I can't check anymore. I, I don't want to check. And also, the queen b1 is threatening, right? Queen b1 is, and probably some checkmate is going to be there. So I, I just wanted to play it safe. You know, just play king c4, play bishop c3. If my opponent lets me, I can even just I can even just go all the way back to a2. And because I have a passer on e6. I'm expecting myself to be winning, but then my opponent found this very tricky move, Queen C2, and now I was trying to avoid a perpetual check because if it would be a perpetual check at least if I if I didn't do something about Queen A4. So the hands I played B3. Now my opponent should have probably just played King A7 here. Although yes, this this is just craziness. My king is just keep, keep is just gonna keep rolling. Maybe even King D5. Actually, King D5 seems a bit more precise because this leaves me. With, a ch with an opportunity to give a check from d4 if I need it. And then the king can just keep going. Yeah. So this is just crazy. And here, yeah, once again, so I know that if I if I get to trade queens, I just, I'm just winning because the pawn promotes. Yeah, and that's what happened. Um, I'm not sure if my opponent could have done anything different because if they don't do this, I, I just go. Maybe I should just, I should have just gone here, right? e7, e8. Maybe I should just like not care. Also here, rook f2 was a possibility, I just noticed. Which might have been a little bit of a problem for me. Because rook f2 and then rook f4 is coming. So maybe, yeah, maybe I, maybe I did blunder after all. Well, I won. <laughs> what to say. I'm definitely not playing perfect. But it's, it's alright. And black is gonna win this one. Because the bishop is of the, of the right square. Oh my god! Hello! Hello! I'm playing Minwe. He kind of destroyed me in, in a bunch of our game. We played a, a small match uh, about a week ago. Um, I'm telling him that it's a rematch time because he beat me bad. He, I think he beat me like three and a half, half about, about a week ago. So maybe I can take this this game uh, as a as a chance to to um, you know cancel the adoption. <laughs> he kind of all right. So he's saying that it's it's really late where he is right now. So it's gonna be tougher for him to play. But yeah, you know, let's let's hope that we will have a very nice game here. Okay, so he's playing like really conservative lines. Just kind of getting the pieces out. Now might be threat in a4 at some point. So I I've okay bishop f4 is I don't know, I'm not a big fan of bishop f4, but once again it's it's a move that that um, kind of wastes time. Uh I'm about to make a move that I'm not gonna be a big fan of myself. <laughs> She's a move f5. Just to overprotect the knight on e4, and then I'll play e6 next. So we'll have a, like a fun exchange um, of, of, of pieces here. Yeah, if he goes on e5, we can just like trade a bunch and 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 yeah, <laughs> just like this. Yes, exactly. We can trade a bunch. I'll probably play something like queen c7, and he's gonna go f4. I'm gonna go e6 and. This looks extremely drawish, not gonna lie. He can try with some g4s. Uh, that's definitely a valid plan, so let's see what he does. So g4 is, is okay. I, I have b5, so I have a counterplay of my own. And if, if he if he fails the, the, the play on the on the king's side, then yeah, so uh, let's let's respect it and let's play queen e7, just just taking away the the h4 square from his queens. He goes a5. That is an interesting decision. 
I'm always, I always, I almost feel like taking and then just playing C4. I know that it may seem a bit strange, but this way I'm, I'm cementing. I'm kind of like making sure the B2 pawn is not moving anywhere. So that's 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 going to be my game plan. My game plan is going to be doubling up on the B file and just putting as much pressure against the B, the B2 pawns as I possibly can. Let's see if it works. Actually, now rook b6, there is e4, what I just noticed. So let's play rook uh, b5 first. And now it's still the same issue. If I go rook b6, yeah, if I go a5, he has some b4. No, actually, no, it does, he doesn't. So let's go a5 now. Next, I'm playing rook b8. Yeah, so rook b8 is happening. Bishop f3. So he's trying to play h4. And he's claiming that my attack is a nuisance. That's not nice. My attack isn't nuisance. It's a sound idea. Good sir. Yeah, so wait, so what if oh he has rook g2. Okay, got it. Okay, he takes. Should I take back with e or should I not take back with e? I think I should just take back with g, honestly. And then he goes rook g5. Yes, this, this is getting a little bit annoying, I would say. <clears throat> I'm up on time, though. That that makes me feel better about myself, even though the position may not follow, but time is a very big factor in, in this tournament. So let's see. Uh, now let's, let's flip our bishop over to g6. Actually, he can do the same as his. He can play like bishop d1 and make it a little bit tough for me to get my bishop over to g6. Okay, he goes h4. I guess the idea is that if I go bishop g6, he goes h5. Okay. But now as he has gone h4, I, can, I, I may see this as a green light to try and uh, play a3 or something. Also, do I really want to do that? I don't know. Yeah, chess is a hard game sometimes because you're really you're, you're you don't know what's good and what isn't. Um, yeah, let's do bishop of seven, and now if h five, I'm gonna go h six. Yeah, h six. Yeah, this is a very tricky position here. Rook a5, but nothing is really threatening. Queen g3, I always have rook g8 here. So um, not much I need to be afraid of um, on that side. At the same time, if he, if he moves a bishop too far away, the pawn on h5 becomes kind of uneasy. Yeah, so let's do this. Rook g8, queen e1. Okay. Uh, I see now. Uh, that is uh, a tiny bit annoying, but let's go back here. Uh, now, if he if he takes, I can take back with the rook because once again his h5 pawn is uh, his h5 pawn is under attack, so that's going to be even trade. If he takes on a4, I take on h5, and I actually don't mind that even trade at all because he goes for another even trade. Wait, but but now if you do even trade, you can't beat me anymore. You understand that, right? <laughs> so with this even trade, I think the position just becomes kind of equal. So I need to I need to make a choice. Do I want to go for this kind of even trade, or do I want to keep pressure on? I think I'm just gonna do even trade, play bishop e8, and try to win this. So my plan for this position is gonna be get my king over to f8. I'll, I'll elaborate for why I'm doing this a bit later. Yeah, so I'll go king g7. He's gonna just just do nothing, I suppose. Yeah, you see, so I'll go king f8. Queen g2. Now I'm gonna go queen b7. So this is gonna force his queen to stay on the second rank. Um, let's go over here. Okay, if I go here, he has queen h4. So let's play bishop. No, uh, I don't know. Yeah, let's go queen b6. Let's let let's yeah let's let queen h4 happen. He doesn't bite. Uh, let's play queen c5. Try to play a3. Let's play a3. Okay, uh, go king e7. So now, now I'm going to bring the king all, all, all the way over there. 
and try to make something happen. So let's go queen a5 for now. King c7. Uh, let's go bishop c6. Uh, yeah, it's going to be tough to break through this, unfortunately, here. Some queen c5, maybe. Uh, gets the... Uh, here, yeah, how can I win this, like, ever? Like, I don't, I don't see... I don't see what is what is that I can do to break through this. Okay, here. Check. Maybe that's what I'm supposed to do. Take. Uh, take. Check. Wait. Check. Check. Uh, check. Uh, let's do check. Check. Because if I take the pawn at any given time, he's gonna he's gonna have perpetual, like probably hundred percent guaranteed. So let's do a couple more checks and play something like d4 here. Oh wait, he could have taken. Oops. Oh, I think it's just a draw still. Yeah, it's just a draw. Ah, hiya, hiya. I thought I got you. GG's. Was there a perpetual after rook b2? At what point? Uh, Ar Arco dipto. I thought, I thought this was it. I thought this was my moment to shine. But unfortunately... Mm. Yeah, here... Yeah, if I take... Yeah, if I take on a 4, he has like... He's gonna keep checking on the 6th rank. So I guess this is probably just still a draw, unfortunate. Well, I mean, I'm, I haven't lost a single game. I'm, I have six and a half out of eight. I've lost one, one and a half points. I still, I'm, I'm still in, uh, in a good standing for, for a top three. I just need to, well, I mean, obviously, once again, the nine and, nine and a half probably is going to do it for, for clear first. But Hikaru is obviously crushing it with seven and a half out of eight right now. So I have three more games, three more very tough games awaiting me. Both rooks and queens, and you're claiming what with both rooks and queens, you're 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 saying there was a perpetual after rook b2. Hmm. Ah, oh, wait. At what point? Uh, there, there is no. I. I uh, at no point could it could I have taken on b2, I think. Yuck. Here. Oh, you mean here? Oh. You're right. I didn't. I didn't even consider. You're correct. Yeah, I can take. Yeah, you see. Very nice. Very nicely spotted. But once again, since I was trying to win, I wasn't even looking at this. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. So I was just kind of kind of trying to to make stuff happen and. I did, but it, unfortunately that wasn't enough. The position is just so so solid for both both sides that yeah, it's it's really hard to win for either one of us. Oh well, um, Minwei is a very strong player. Obviously, do not mind the result at all. We have one more game going on. Oh, it's uh, it's an infamous rook and four versus rook and three, but the uh, side with four pawns has double pawns on the F file. Oh my god, rook d1, go for it, rook d1. No, what? Go, you gotta go, rook d1. King e1, rook d1, yes, go, rook d1. But, but why? <laughs> but, but why not rook d1? Does he, does he just not want to go into the pawn end game? But I don't think white can go into pawn end game. This is, this is lost, right? This is just lost. Boom. Right, this pawn game is lost, so white cannot go into it. And if white doesn't, let's say white plays rook h7, maybe that's what he was afraid of. There's king f1, and now the checkmate in one is threatening. So no, this is this is a must. Okay, white could have also done this and kind of pushed the, the black king all, all the way over to h1, but I mean, this is this is a great chance. White has to do this if they're, if they're trying to win, which I suppose they were. Yeah, 
All right, anyway. We have a six minute break. Oh. Oh. Yeah, I'm, I'm feeling the fatigue is catching up onto me. Have I ever played Title Tuesday before? Oh yeah, probably about five to six times. But uh, I've had, I've, I've never, I've never really done well. I, I would always start very well, but. But then something would happen and I would lose a whole bunch of games in a row, which may still happen. I'm going to knock on the wood and, and, and try to not jinx myself. But yeah, I, I would just usually just kind of collapse. Collapse by the end of the tournament. And also twice, like out of those six times that I played Title Tuesday, I had a bad experience where I was playing somebody who, who was using, using help of the program. Like basically who was cheating and uh, yeah, somehow I managed to beat them once, and then obviously the second game I lost. But yeah, that's that's just you know not not only was I not doing well like in my overall score, but it was also you know having experience of playing against cheaters, and it uh, it didn't help. It further discouraged me from from participating in that title Tuesday events. But I figured that this is probably one of the one of the best ways of practicing because you know you're playing like all the title players and like the strongest players in the world play in this event. So I use this as an opportunity to practice my 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 blitz uh, as opposed to winning prizes. So yeah. <sighs> Who is Figaro going to be playing? He's a he's a sole leader with seven and a half out of eight. Then there there is there are quite a few people with seven points, and then we have a whole bunch of people with six and a half, including myself. That's that makes it what twelve people, I believe. So I do have, um, yeah, I do have quite a few strong opponents to still play against. Uh, let's see. Would be would be very interesting to play against uh, Grandmaster Badur Jabawa. He's a very exciting player to play against, and just in general, a very nice guy. So yeah, looking forward to it. I'm probably gonna face him if both of us do well, or maybe if both of us don't do well <laughs> in the next round. Wow, Hikaru's look at the, look at Hikaru's tie breaks. <laughs> he's he's even if he even if he shares the first place at this point his tie break is 44.75 which is seven seven points ahead of the next contender which is Jeffrey and myself actually so even if he even if he somehow managed to share first or second place with Sikara he's just gonna outdo us in, on tie breaks anyway we have we have about a minute and a half until the end of the break so yeah I'm I'm really hoping like no I I like, no pressure but um maybe maybe this is the one. It would be cool if I could you know have a good result in Title Tuesday for once. Okay. Hikaru's Hikaru's rating is thirty two hundred. Oh my god. I was I'm actually nearing three thousand myself, so maybe okay, but thirty two hundred is unreasonable. I would have to like have a perfect score against people of my level, which is very hard to do. Alright, let's go. Come on. Start it. I can't wait. <clears throat> Alright. 
games are about to resume. Playing Alexander Moskalenko. Sure. Very strong remaster from Russia. Let's do it. Let's play some of this. <laughs> Uh, okay. Just play this position normally, I guess. I'm not sure exactly what my queen is doing on c2, but oh well. <clears throat> you don't. You can't. You can't get the perfect setup all the time. Sometimes it has to be like this. Also, this might have transposed into something. I'm not gonna lie. So let's play c5 now. I, I'm. I'm sure c5 is. Um, I mean, it, it gives up the control over the d5 score, which is a little bit annoying. But at the same time, I do get, right, I do get some, right, some connection between my pawns, and the c5 pawn is, is, is taking away quite a few important squares from black. B4. Okay, that's fair. I for some reason I kind of um, missed, um, well, didn't, mi not quite missed, but I kind of didn't um, think too long about the the possibility of black playing before. And here actually I have I have a five myself, so this this way I'm cementing the b four pawn. And also I'm I'm actually looking to play knight b six at some point and get rid of the very annoying knight on d five. So let's see how this is. Once again, this is a very non-standard position, and that's that's what I'm looking for whenever I play. Anybody, I'm looking for non-standard positions where you know it's unclear what to do, and you know those are th I believe those are the positions where I where I perform the best. Um, no particular reason; it's just it's just my observation. Okay, so here let's play bishop of one just just to prevent knight of four in the future and, and get ready to play knight e five. Also, knight d six is going to be coming, so. My opponent needs to be wary of that. Now knight b6 has become a possibility. This looks very, very unpleasant for black at this point. Let's see. Okay, takes, takes, takes. a5, I assume. Yeah, a5 did happen. Now what if what if I go knight e5? Knight e5? This looks like really bad for black. I don't know. I'm, I could be just horribly wrong about my evaluation, but this looks... I mean, in classical game, I think I would win this position 100 times out of 100 that I would play it. <clears throat> but obviously in Blitz, uh, anything can happen and I, I should not let my guard down. I'm, I, I will be, I'll be looking to trade queens at this point. Trading queens will help me, um, help me a bunch because then the knight cannot, can never leave c6. If knight ever leaves c6, the a5 pawn will fall and, and I have, basically I have the full control over the d file at this point. Um, Bishop d3 just wins. Am I crazy? Or my opponent is deliberately uh, trying to give a, give me a... Oh, I see. Okay. I think I understand. I can play rook d7 now, though, right? Let's go rook, oh, rook d7, queen c2. Okay. So if this, there's queen d5, and then... Oh, no, I don't get it. Let's go. <laughs> Takes. Oh, okay, so yeah, that's what I thought, but I mean, that's a, a queen is a queen, right? Yeah. But a queen is a queen, and I, if I don't win this position while being up a queen, I'll be kind of, I kind of stop, I was kind of going to stop respecting myself a little bit. So let's not, let's not let this happen. I shall not lose self-respect for myself, at least not yet. I'm not yet at that stage of my life. Or hopefully I'm not. Uh, okay, so takes queen d7. Uh huh, it looks a little bit sus, right? So let's just take here. I, I do need to be wary of, of these pawns, but because I took on d4, now I'm going to be threatening checkmates of my own on h8. So next move is bishop f6 if black doesn't react, and looks like black is a little bit, a little bit 
too slow with their counterattack on the queen's side. Yeah, so bishop f6 and queen h4, queen there should conclude the game. Um, I mean, force checkmate, right? Here. Takes queen h8, queen g7. All right, so this one, this one is good. This one was very, very smooth. <laughs> Uh, easier than I expected, not gonna lie. I just immediately got, yeah, this is, like, b5 is, is a very typical idea, but I think my opponent just didn't realize. Here, my opponent probably should have played a5, like, to be fair, because letting me play a5 uh, basically cements his pawn on b4, it makes it a weakness, and it lets me play knight b6, and it just, just those reasons alone are probably enough to claim that I have, a, that my position is better, and that the, the D, a control where the d5 square is not enough to compensate for all the weaknesses that black uh, received with, with their play. So yeah, this was this was really smooth. I, maybe I mean obviously I'm not the only one who is fatigued at this point. I should also remember that my opponents are also you know kind of following the, following following back uh, in terms of uh, their strengths because it's the end of the tournament. Everyone is going to be playing slightly weaker. So this might be my chance. Uh, I can use this time to. To take a little break, and Hikaru is actually going to lose this game, which is very, very, very... It's, it's, it's crazy. He's definitely lost, king f2, king g3, king g4. Oh, yeah. He lost. That's, that's unusual for Hikaru to lose, I guess. Um, some blunder happened somewhere along the way. Yeah, okay, so first of all, here, this, this happened. Very unfortunate, right? So here, just bishop a3 was a threat and I'm not sure maybe maybe it was a deliberate exchange sacrifice although I don't think that's the case. I'm very surprised Hikara didn't make this move though. This move looks very nice for black because it's a double attack attacks both d4 and f2. So I guess you see yeah everyone is fatigued at this point so I should yeah I shouldn't obviously I shouldn't let my guard down but yeah I'm I'm you know I'm in there. So now eight points out of out of nine will be a will be a shared first. Let's see. There's 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 two more people who can get to eight eight out of nine, and then they'll, I I assume they're going to be playing each other, and there's a high chance I'll actually get to play Hikaru next game, as black, unfortunately. But once again, in blitz, color usually doesn't matter much. Okay, now there's three people with eight out of nine. Hikaru is weak. Well, yeah, I mean, he's probably, I would, I would assume that he's, he's still, he, he might still be a little bit sick. Um, obviously, it doesn't mean that, uh, I mean, he's still Hikaru, you know, still really strong. Okay, so I feel like Hikaru is going to go, is gonna, Hikaru is going to play up because there's only three people with eight out of nine. So some, one of them will have to play down and Hikaru is definitely the one who is going to, who's going to play them. Um, not a bad opportunity, not gonna lie. So there, we may see a case where if Hikaru wins and then the other two guys that have 8 out of 9, they will play each other for sure. If those two guys make a draw, we'll, we may see a huge tie for first with 8.5 with eight, eight out of 10. Uh, do, 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 do. We have four more games going. Okay, we have we're gonna. This game is gonna last for a long time because it's a rook and a bishop versus rook essentially. Given that white can win some pawns here, I'm not entirely sure how because the black rook. All black needs to do. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they decide to save uh, to save some um, some strengths and just not torture themselves here because all black has to do is just keep the rook over on a sixth rank. Okay, I'm playing yeah I'm playing a very stronger master from Israel. Let's go. <clears throat> Some Caro. B4. Interesting. I do not know B4. 
this is like a big novelty for me. Like I have no idea what's what's happening now. But let's just play fast and hope that I'm right. Not sure if I'm too happy to let this happen, but I guess I have to, right? Oh, he takes with a queen. Very interesting. Okay. I think like he's going to take with a pawn, but no, it's fine. Once again, it's a very non-standard position, very exciting. My opponent cannot castle because of my queen on a6, so that's kind of good. Uh, let's go here. If I ever play c5, he's going to get to play b5, and that's why I'm not sure if I want to do that quite yet. But at the same time, what is my opponent? What can my opponent do? It's a it's a funny it's a funny like tsuk twang uh, position where my opponent doesn't really want to play five because it, it compromises like the light squares even more. Um, B five is is a is a possibility, but it's it it white has to sacrifice and white has to be ready to sacrifice the material there. Uh, otherwise, I don't really see um, a sound plan for white here. I don't really see a sound plan for myself. <laughs> well, that's that's a different question. Like, I'm not sure if I. What should I? Oh wait, no, it's still it's still white white move. Okay, so let's see. My opponent is taking his sweet time. When f3 happens, so I guess he's he is planning on playing uh, there. Let's play bishop e7. Just getting ready for the end game. This may bait him to go back, right? To go back to e3 and, and try to uh, flip his queen over to g5. Okay, no, it does not. Okay, so so we just have like some kind of like an equal position, I believe, here. Right? Yeah, okay, so okay, b5 happened, but this gives me this gives me the c file, right? So I'm I'm surprised to see if my opponent just gives me the c file like this. I mean I guess he's I guess he's hoping to play a5 now, right? Like a5, he takes takes a5. Yeah. Okay, so let me just go back and, and ask what's going on. What is happening? I can take and play knight b6 and knight b3 is gonna happen. Yeah, this looks a okay, I guess. Let's do it. I don't really see how I'm losing, so why not? Let's do it. Knight b3, knight c4. I'm going to get to play in the book b7 next. Okay, so knight c4 now is kind of impossible, so let's play rook b7 instead. Now I'm kind of... I, I want to play knight c8. Or do I? It's a good question. Okay, so yes, this, I saw this. This is... I think this is just a draw. Uh, knight d7, knight's going to get to f6, but that's that's about it. White cannot really win that position. And, but, uh, uh, oh wait, what am I doing? I'm supposed to be playing for a win. Oh my god, I'm so stupid. <laughs> Oops. That's Argentina? Oops, sorry, Argentina. Oh my god, my bad. I mean, Argentinian flag and, and Israeli flag is are kind of similar looking, no? Or am I imagining things here? I might be. Sorry. Probably contemplating f3. But then I have rook a5, so... I mean, at least I'm safe. And okay, f3 did happen. Okay, all right. So my opponent is not is not liking a a, a draw. Obviously. So if my opponent is not liking a draw, how about I also don't? Uh, how about I also don't like a draw? But I just need to be sure I don't lose somehow because okay, let's. I mean, we we're we're playing this on like. We're playing this. This is this is happening. This is so happening. Takes. Uh, okay, takes. There, there. Yeah, let's do this. Go here. Can I win this though? Like it's gonna be so tough to win this. It's. Yeah, he's just. 
just wants to draw or is this or am I missing something here go back he just wants to draw no but why it's so stupid I don't want to draw but like I did it to myself right like I can't yeah I have to dumb yeah this is I mean, but that's that's what it takes. I mean, that's not what it takes. That's what it le That's what what happens when you play when you play um, when you play Carol when you play a safe line of Carol. I mean, at this point, I may as well just try to flag him. But no, yeah, it's um, I'm, I'm I could I can only lose if I let's say go here and and go for this kind of position. I think I, I think the only thing that can happen is me losing because he has he has a connected passer on e5 and it's it's way easier for him to to push. So even though he has only about 20 seconds on his clock and I have over a minute, but yeah. Um, boring game. <laughs> All I can say is really, really boring game. It just shows you that, I guess, doesn't matter. I mean, okay, Caro, is, Caro has a potential of, of being a really boring, boring opening, but that's, it's, that the, all depends on, how, on what line your opponent chooses. You're right, I'm so stupid, Danish. You're correct, see? Wow, this was this was my chance right here. Yeah, you're right. I would have probably won the game if I had I yeah, had I seen this. Upsetting, but once again, uh, at least I didn't lose. So I still I'm still holding a chance for something, right? I'm not not for much, but for something. I I just need to win the next game, and maybe I can like sneakily get into a shared third place and stuff. I'm gonna be I'm gonna get pushed back by all the people who are who are about to win with seven and a half and there, I'm pretty sure there'll be many of those. Keep rolling. Yeah this is this not no no joke this is my best attempt in Title Tuesday. No no the, 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 uh, no just one one more to go Danish. Just one more. I have eight out of ten and there is eleven games. I win one in a row, yeah. I, I, I'm gonna try my best to win one game in a row. It's gonna be tough, but I'll manage. Let's see. Unless I play Hikaru, uh, in which case it's gonna be very hard to win one in a row. But if I play literally anyone else, I think I have my chances are pretty decent. Oh, is Nemsko also playing in Title Tuesday? Oh, she, her stream's title reads late to Title Tuesday. Lol. Okay, so can you late join in Title Tuesday? Is it even possible? I don't know. Like, uh, once again, I haven't haven't really played in it for quite some time, so I don't know how it works. Oh, uh, let's see. So I'm. Yeah, I'm gonna be passed by these two people and and then Yeah, so yeah, I just yeah, so literally I just need to win the next game. Nobody else can pass me. If I win the next game I have I have a good shot. I'm actually going I'm gonna be I'm gonna be playing up probably against uh, Valery Sviridov, who is a national master from Russia, but apparently he's a he's a godlike blitz player. If I play him, this is probably my biggest chance ever. If I get to if I get to play him next game, I'm going to be white as well. Obviously, it doesn't mean that they cannot lose. Oh, we have oh we have rook and bishop versus rook. Oh, thanks for the support, Larry. See, I'm trying. I'm trying. I mean, Black should survive, right? Like this, they, they know the setup. Yeah. King C, King C7 still works, I believe. A rook C7 is good too. Now King is gonna flip with a rook, now King is gonna go to E7, yep. Mm hmm. Alright, so. I mean, knows his, his end games. 
he's not too fast. He usually have have he usually had his number in bullet. Gotcha, gotcha, Danish. All right. But obviously, it's I mean, it's that's what it seems like is going to happen, right? Because I'm 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 top. I have the best uh, the best tie breaks among the eight eight pointers. So I'm supposed to be the one going up. But maybe they do it so that whoever's higher rated is going to go up. In which case, you know, there's a whole bunch of people who are who are higher rated than me. You never know. No matter what happens, I'm happy with my today's performance. And all that while commentating on the stream. Imagine me, I was playing Title Tuesdays by myself without like without streaming, and I wasn't doing well. But maybe my, oh, maybe that's maybe that's what I'm supposed to do. I'm supposed to play Title Tuesday on stream. That's how I win. I think I just cracked the system. Okay, draw by 50 move rule. Let's go. We have that's it, right? We have yeah. So I'm sharing six. I need to win the next game, and then okay, didn't happen. But I'm playing a candidate master. So I need to win still. Let's go. Very strong candidate master from India. Very strong. Let's go. <clears throat> 97. That's not a move, is it? So I guess I need like full, full concentration mode right now. I'm pretty sure I'm better. It's just the question is how much, if it's enough for me to win. Knight is just keeps jumping around like a madman. I have d6 at some point, like here, for example. If b6 happens, I have d6. Even here, d6. Like, what? What does what does black do against this? Okay, does that really takes takes? This, this is over, right? Like, I I promote. Bishop e6, knight b6. Bishop e6, knight b6. Rook d8. Takes rook d6, gg. I mean, this this is probably history for me at least. This might be the, the first, I think, this might be the first time I, even if I don't get into top three, even if I don't get into top three, first of all, whenever, if, if the, sh if, the, if the third place share is gonna happen, I don't know. I don't know the system. Maybe I should. Maybe I will have to play tie breaks, or whatever the Armageddon match against somebody who is who has shared third place with me. Or maybe maybe it's just gonna take tie breaks and give me the third place. But whatever happens, oh, we, sh we just share money. Is that is that it? We just share money. It's gonna be like it's gonna be an obviously non non-existent price, but doesn't matter. <laughs> 
it does not matter. I haven't lost a single game entitled Tuesday. <laughs> and I got it. I'm pro I'm I probably guarantee myself top three. Thank you, Larius. Yeah, this was my opponent didn't know didn't know the um I d didn't know the line. This what's it for twenty three dollars? Great performance, thanks. I could probably do better, not gonna lie. If I if I keep if I keep playing blitz and if I keep streaming playing blitz like consistently, I think I can do better. But yeah, this. Uh, thanks, Arco Dipto. Thank you for uh, everybody who who are here supporting me. That's that's great help. You guys are the reason for why uh, for why this happened. I'm not even okay. First of all, we 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 shouldn't we shouldn't say anything in advance because maybe I won't even get any prizes. But. If my calculations are correct, then um, how many people are there with eight and a half out of ten? So okay, so here Jeffrey versus Wonderful Time. So we can even share first. If we if we get really lucky, we we gonna share first because then yeah. So this guy needs to lose as white. Oh my god, he is losing. That's insane. He's gonna lose. Even if he draws. Did you hurt your hand by playing chess too hard? No, my finger got fractured while I was playing basketball. So I played basketball about a month and a half ago, and uh, actually with my good friend, and who, who is also a chess streamer, a Japanese tutor, JT. His name is Charlie. He's a really nice guy. He uh, he he flew over to Saint Louis for 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 the weekend to to just kind of spend spend time with me, and then we played basketball. That was my second basketball uh, of my entire life, my second basketball game. Of my entire life, and uh, and I got really unlucky. The ball ricocheted off of the floor right into my right into my ring finger, and yeah, I didn't go to doctor immediately because because GT told me that you know sprains and 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 stuff happens like all the time. Can I dunk? No, I can barely make it. I can make I can barely make two pointers. Like I'm really bad. You're tired, yeah. So if this, so I just need. Okay, so what needs to happen is this game needs to end in a draw. This game needs to end in a draw. If these guys draw, no joke, I'm sharing first. But I'm gonna be probably gonna be wait. Well, what about Hikaru? Is Hikaru playing still? Hikaru is still playing. Okay, so if Hikaru wins, right? Hikaru is eight. No, he has seven and a half. But Hikaru lost two in a row. Oh my God, Hikaru lost two in a row. Wait, I have a real chance. I have a real chance of sharing first. That's insane. This game needs to draw. These guys need to need to draw. If these guys draw, I'm, I'm, I, I share first. And I'm going to be second on tie breaks, but I share first. Oh my god, they, they draw. They draw. They draw. Oh my god. No way. Oh my god, no way, and this guy can't win, right? If, I mean, this guy absolutely cannot win, he can only lose. Hello, Ashworth. This is crazy. Am I the luckiest person in the world or what? Thanks for the stream. Oh, my pleasure, Arcodipto, my pleasure. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad you enjoyed it. Like, look at this, this is insanity. I mean, okay, Black can still lose this. If, if he gets, like... Gradient plays rookie seven now, I think. He can still lose. C6, interesting. Interesting attempt. Okay, but this this does absolutely nothing though. Just king h4. Okay, I really hope Black doesn't like lose this game. This would be a tragedy, like honestly. Like what is Black trying to do? Like I'm 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 super confused. Black, Black can actually lose now. Like what? Please don't lose. Like for the love of everything that's there, that, that's there. Please don't lose. <laughs> just keep the, yeah, just keep the rook there. Just keep the rook there. Black is asking for a king c3 is gonna happen. d5, right? d5, yeah. King a2. King e3, king e2, king e3. Oh my god, I shared first place. 
<laughs> I shared first place, ladies and gentlemen. And I'm second on tie breaks, whatever. Hooray! Whoa, that's a that's a long tie. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine people so far. That's fire. Yeah, that is fire. That is this is my my officially my best title Tuesday performance ever. I'm not even sure. Like, I I thought I, could, I I thought I could do better. I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure if I could do better than this. I'm happy. I'm very happy, and I'm yeah. I'm, I'm honestly. I'm. This is this is some kind of sign from above. I'm actually only half a point behind Jeffrey. <laughs> My tape break is literally half a point behind. It's. <laughs> Uh, it, it's a, you see, I've never ever won anything in Title Tuesdays, and and this the first time I I stream on St. Louis Chess Club's Twitch channel, I basically almost won first place. Yeah, second by half a yeah by half yes second by half a tie break. It's okay, I take it. It's okay, you know I I I haven't you know what what I'm more what I'm more excited about is that I haven't lost a single game. It almost never happens. It's, it's blitz. Pieces are flying, you know. Like nobody knows what's happening, and and yet I somehow managed to 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 keep the score clean without a single loss. That's my, you know, my 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 ego has been has been has been really happy, or my my ego is very happy right now. Why why it has has been it, it is. But anyway, I think that's yeah, that's that's me. I uh, I'm gonna be. You guys will see me way more. From now on, uh, on Saint Louis Chess Club's Twitch channel, I'll be, uh, I'll be, uh, yeah, streaming from their studio, and uh, and hopefully I can, <laughs> hopefully I can do. <laughs> okay, it's really hard to beat the score. Like I don't know what am I supposed to do, like to to beat this. Uh, but yeah, hopefully I can one day win clear first in Tuesday. That's gonna be the goal.